All right, so we have about 15 people who've logged in, Aditi. Mm -hmm. Let's get ready to present ourselves. I mean, I'm looking forward to getting to understand a little about Posh Foundation, about your story, story of your foundation, and some more. So formally introducing myself, my name is Bonnie Laila, and I have been active in the animal space for the last 17 years. Internationally for the last five years, um, I live in Frankfurt, and I'm talking to you, Aditi who has been the founder of Posh Foundation, who is based out of Gurgaon, Delhi, Aditi. I give this over to you to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Aditi Badam, and I'm an animal rights activist. And we have a shelter in Noida, but I stay in Ghaziabad. So the hop between Noida and Ghaziabad is to and fro almost every day. OK. And when you look after your uh, dogs, etc., is it going to be in the area of Ghaziabad and Noida? Is that how you sort of look yes, at exactly. it? Yes, yes, yes. Noida and Ghaziabad, both the areas we are covering. Uh, the ambulance most likely to be, you know, in uh, uh, the Noida region only. And okay. then I personally take care of the animals who are being hit or are injured in Ghaziabad. Because that's okay. where I so that brings me to the point as to what was that turning point in your life that motivated you to start Posh Foundation or Animal Rescue? Or how did it all start? Where, how does your story begin? Well, animal welfare is always very close to my heart. It's been like 20 years feeding the animals. I got it from my mother. So, so the story of Posh Foundation is a very ordinary story. Like-minded people, they come together, they form an organization, they start working towards adoption of the animals. Mm -hmm. But with the span of time, we understand that the adoption is not the solution. We need to find more, uh, uh, you know, relevant ways because the population, uh, it's, it's an overpopulated uh, um, city, both right. for humans and for animals. But right now, currently, we are dealing with the animals. So, so neutering is the other way. And then we, you know, there are so many sick and injured animals we have to deal with. So mm -hmm. from time and again, uh, things have been changed and we have formed a close bond with so many people, uh, sponsors and supporters, volunteers. So in and all, it was a very nice experience. If I can share a personal touch where and how a Bosch Foundation has been formed is um, I worked at Fortis Hospital. Uh, I'm telling you, it was uh, 2013, mm -hmm. in 2013. So one uh, day, mein, uh, it, it was a usual day. I was driving, so I was standing in front of So I thought ki somebody might have hit someone. So I stopped by to check what is going on. So there was this dog lying over there, and nobody was doing anything. They were like, hey, you see, you see, you see. So I requested people over there to at least put the dog in my car and uh, I would rush to vet. So there uh, vet has declared that uh, uh, she'll not be able to survive. Her back has already broken and this is. So being from a medical background, I thought to ask two or three questions to the veterinary. I'm not going to name the person. Uh, but he says, Ki, no, no, Manika, without actually, you cannot say that uh, the spine is broken. Hmm. So he says, no, no, I'm telling you, who are you? Are you are the doctor or I'm the doctor? So I I, so I said, Ki, no, no, this is not the way and I'm not going to give it up. So I named the dog Julie and um, then I brought her home. So and the day then I go back to my office and my office says, Ki, what is going on? Why are you so late? Why are you looking so dirty? And all, all the blood and everything was on my Close. So I said, you see, this is the scene. The dog has been hit down. And so that's why I lay. So he says, no, no, this is your everyday problem. You decide what do you want to do? What was more important? So I told my boss, ki, the most important part or the most important thing was to save the animal. If being an, as being a, a human, if I can't do it, so I mean, there is no point calling as a medical representative, right? So right. then I was fired. I got fired. So, so that was back more back. like your, it was more like a blessing in disguise. And was this your first <laughs> rescue? Absolutely. Was this your first hands-on rescue that you sort hands of did? Yes, that was my first hands-on rescue, which I gave like two months of proper exercising and everything. And after two months, she started walking. 
little wobbly though but she started walking and she spent around five and a half years beautifully that's such an inspiring story aditi that's indeed inspiring story we have a few questions that are popping up on the on the forum that's from facebook and if you could please answer one of them which is um, let me just see if i could share it with you um it goes as there is a street dog who needs medical help but is not friendly how can we help and this is from uh, aditi singhal so if you could throw some light as to there are cases where you know that people genuinely wish to help animals but the animals are shy or they are aggressive because it's they are in distress or pain so how would you take it forward the quick and best call to made is open your uh, smartphone google down the uh, the the nearest animal shelter or the nearest veterinary care or the nearest rescue person or the nearest awbi member and you can connect with the person and ask for the help any necessary help you want either in lifting the dog or carrying the dog to a hospital or admitting him to um, any animal shelter or any boarding or any care this is hmm. the best so and uh, i would like to just since we are on that same area of uh, talking about how to help the animals um tell us a bit about the animals who are at this point in time in your care in 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 posh foundation the the number of animals that you all take care of it can be 20 it can be hundreds but you know the ones who are really under your care all the time 24 by 7 how how many of them are there see we run an animal uh, shelter which is totally based upon the medical need the entire medical need of the animal so we take in sick and injured animals we get them treated make them healthy and then release them back only if they have any feeders or any caretaker in and around who can take care of them those who are very old or met with an accident and get amputated or either are blind or cannot survive on their own on street we adopt them and they become the part of the posh family so currently we have a facility of like uh, uh, treating 45 patients because we have 45 separate kennels for each patient to monitor the uh, the uh, amount of water they drank the amount of poop the kind of poop they do right so and uh, uh, and the section of the um, uh, the uh, what to say the sick and injured animals is entirely different and then we have old dogs and then we have blind dogs triple dogs so in an average we have 100 plus animals at our care wow um is this just with dogs that you all take care of and i'm sure when you're looking after the dogs you will also have people who are involved so who are your star people in posh foundation without whom you know the show cannot run on and you are grateful to them and who are these rising stars who are hidden behind the scenes I would love to start off with the very first name that is Nidhi Mishra. She is the backbone, the operational head of Posh Foundation, doing every bit day and night for the animals. Mm -hmm. And then I'd like to thank our veterinary doctors. Mostly, Dr. Shravan is there, mm -hmm. uh, who gives, uh, you know, who has a magical hands in surgery, and then he he charges so less, and sometimes he gives us. Um, uh free samples and all i mean he is he is amazing person okay and then we have uh, supporters like sheila is there shilpika is there they are wonderful wonderful people who not only take care of the animals those are around their houses but mm -hmm. also for the animals at the shelter every now and then we got calls every now and then we got messages how are the child doing with specific names how is piku doing how is puku doing how is so i matlab as a jolt i write down everybody is fine in bold letters mm -hmm. to practice conversation so, so I mean, hmm. sorry and, so uh, these are the active volunteers that you have absolutely, that absolutely. and then there are so many school students there are so many school students mm -hmm. and college students who uh, you know who help us in because see if we are working on ground and we don't have any uh, you know time to post the uh, uh, social media and to update the social media or to update the app website or to start a blog or to write blog so right. these are the two students who help us out every saturday sunday they 
come to the shelter they click beautiful photographs they uh, and put up uh, the adoption course to the uh, various you know platforms to help the dogs getting a very nice home right so i have a difficult question to ask of you which is when you are actually in the animal world and you have a rescue shelter these are not like uh, just you know animals over there they need 24 by 7 care they do not speak the same language that you and i speak you need to have people who understand the mindset of animals and especially because the animals all put together sometimes they are scared sometimes they bark not out of aggression but out of fear and then there are people who you sort of bring on board to you know these are the people who are your people who work with the animals give them food probably do the dressing more like the compounders do etc how do you how do you sort of keep these people happy and understand that the bond between animals and them are genuinely there and they are not working just because they are earning something so there's always this fine line and this difficulty that most people in the animal rescue organizations face how do you tackle this very difficult problem that's a very important question and i'd like to tell all the volunteers that visit a shelter that the staff working over there is the backbone are the real heroes who take care of the feeding of the animals who take care of the uh, sanitary part the uh, you know giving them medicines and uh, treating them with all the love and care so treat them with dignity and respect mm-hmm. you know do not do not treat them coming away oi idhar aa ye kya kar raha hai wo kya no no respect is what everybody needs these days and they are the real heroes who are doing so much because they we can spend a time like say 5 hours 8 hours a day at the shelter but they are there 24 into 7 and understand one thing it's not about posh foundation it's about every other shelter mm. if you are going to misbehave with any of the staff they are going to take out the rage on the animal center shelter so please be patient with them understand what they need uh you know take care of them this is what the best you can do and in return they will you know they will give you um, the work which you want and uh, all the uh, there are times when we we do a uh, uh, you know surprise visit at the shelter and we find the shelter all clean and very nice and when we enter the shelter in, instead of meeting us there are so many dogs who said ki who kept lying over there and um, these boys I, mean, i found these boys cuddling them and you know combing them so i find it really blessed to have such a good beautiful and very nice team with boys yeah. i i think you touched upon a very sensitive part of respecting people because i i personally believe in dignity of labor and no work is a small work and and i think unfortunately globally it's i will not just say in india but it's a global phenomena that people who are from the who are working at the back end for them it's truly a thankless job and when you have volunteers or people who are working over there giving them just nothing else but just two words of appreciation it goes a long way in long way Absolutely. in uh, motivating them but tell me some of your experiences around the same line where people have been really sweet to your your working hands as i say extended working hands and it's and there's been a moment where an animal's life has been turned around share with us some story around those so approximately 4 months back we uh, got a call from an anonymous person stating that um, he wants to give up his dog after so much of counseling and all he says you know he's very ferocious i just can't keep him either you say yes or i'm going to the doctor and euthanize him so he says okay we'll give a chance so the dog name was tiger so he came to the shelter he was very ferocious very ferocious i can't tell you matlab you cannot look into his eyes you start barking and he start pouncing on you oh wow so with the span of time of 2 months the my staff has not only changed the name of the dog from tiger to pyare lal <laughs> but tiger actually became pyare lal so he wags his tail he's he's not friendly with everyone for sure but to his caretaker he is the most matlab i cannot ask the caretaker in a you know in a loud volume kaha ja raha hai kya kar raha hai he will immediately come and say what what is going on <laughs> so that that's an amazing amazing you know 
one must come and meet Pyarelal at the shelter and then understand. That gives me another question to ask you. Um, what is what is it that triggers people to abandon their animals and what is the right sort of counseling that there are many people who who know in their extended family who know in, in their friend circle who want to give up on the animal for whatever behavioral problems are there what are those right key points that you would want to give out as a message to people who are in the forum who would be able to pass on and say counsel in the right way rather than just initially you know letting the dog be abandoned for whatever reasons and especially so with senior dogs First of all, if a person who calls you and asks you about the breed specification, that you have breed dog and I want to adopt a breed dog, mm -hmm. please tell them very carefully that Husky does not belong to a, a, you know, a critical weather like mm -hmm. in Delhi. They belong to a very much cooler place, much adoptive place, right? Mm -hmm. Same as St. Bernard. So they mm -hmm. also understand before buying it from, uh, you know, any a, any random uh, dog breeder uh, mm -hmm. that uh, the adoption of a dog or you know uh, getting a dog at your home totally depends upon the number of person are there in the family the area they share i mean is it a flat or a three bedroom villa or you know it depends upon how much time you can give what kind of environment is there if you have a big dog let's say then you should have a um, you should have a garden in or around your vicinity. I mean, where is he going to, you know, release his energy? Mm. And if he's not going to release his, his energy, he is going to become ferocious. And then you are going to tie him up and then he become more ferocious. And then one day you'll quit and say, Ki, I want to leave the dog. Oh, so they are all connected, which means the breed That's of the dog, the size absolutely. of the dog and the abandonment is all connected. Absolutely. And right. I, I feel pity on the people who say my dog is 14 years old, he cannot poop on his own, he is lying all day, please, please take him. Mm. They want to abandon the kid at the shelter. I mean, for God's sake, you will be too old. Please understand the concept. And there are so many instances I can figure out and I can tell you wherein ki people, you know, people dump their uh, dogs like 14 year dog and tie them uh, to the pole or to outside the shelter uh, premises and then dog doesn't i mean you cannot make your dog understand why you are leaving and the dog died due to heart failure due to depression so they stop eating and eventually they die i mean what good you have done hmm. 14 years is like 99 years in human age Please so, uh, have there been moments where uh, where you've been able to help uh, senior dogs get adopted? And if yes, what is it that is it there? There are so many components that make senior dogs so endearing. So, tell us a little about your experience in helping senior dogs get adopted. See, as my partner Nidhi says, he, every old dog is mine. Oh, how sweet! He keeps mumming. So whenever we go outside, either on a rescue, whenever we see a, a, an old dog, she just looked at me and smiled. I said, no, you can't take this. Dog. No, he's old. He, we can take it. Hmm. So, uh, you know, adopting a senior dog, I would uh, prefer the senior citizens should adopt a senior dog. Right. Because, you know, they don't need much of, they don't have much of energy to release these dogs. I mean, they lie in one corner. All they need is food and love. And senior citizens have this thing in abundance. They can right. get love. Like, so, and uh, you you don't, you I mean, you don't have a fear. Ki, what if we will die one day? Who is going to take care of the dog? Because he's already senior. If you mm -hmm. can give six months of happiness to a dog who is starved or who is abandoned or who is, who has lived his life on road. Isn't it a wonderful thing? Indeed, that's really a very interesting point of view that you bring in senior dogs or senior citizens because that really balances off the energies that you're talking about. Just the right amount of energies, just the right amount of uh, food requirements, you know, soft food, soft food. I mean, even if they were to sort of give tables and the amount of love that you get in from the senior dogs, they have seen life and they're all... I, in my view, I think, and correct me if I am wrong or right, but in my view, I think uh, senior dogs are also uh, trained to a large extent. Trained, yes. As I told you, they don't have that much of energy to exhale or to spend on. 
so they are more they are very calm animals all they need is love and care that's it not very much of care but still and you know or senior citizens if they live their life on their own and then they have someone to give so much of love and get so much of love in return i i would i would really want to get retired like that yeah I I I have seen families where the 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 life of dog as well as senior people have improved because of the love for each other and it prolongs lifespan because it's such a strong energy. Would you second that opinion? And if yes, do you I have? have an, I have a brilliant idea for that. Yeah. I have a very brilliant idea for that. I would suggest all those people and the organizations who are running for the elder elderly people. Huh. Please get these old dogs adopted to the elderly homes. I mean, look at the energy level over there. Look at the beautiful, the aura, the gesture over there. I mean, there are old dogs and there are senior citizens living together in harmony, all love everywhere. It's so yeah. much fun. Well, that's really sweet uh, of a dream. Who knows? Maybe Posh Foundation will take up with this idea and go forward one of these days. <laughs> I would like you to talk a little more about a difficult topic and brace yourself up Aditi it is talking about the animal laws which I think you need to empower your volunteers you need to empower the right people who are these key people you think need to know about the animal laws the arcane laws which really don't fit uh, that need changes the laws that need that are there and that really need to be percolated to the mass in, in, in at large Talk us a little through those. There are laws. Certainly there are laws. The only thing that is lacking is implementation and adequate knowledge to the layman. Mm -hmm. For me, if I if I have a, you know, if I have an option to educate people, so which group I would choose? I would choose three groups. One is the police officers. Mm -hmm. Because many times there are chaos wherein people hit uh, other people because they are feeding animals. So these people call hundred and then police come and they took side of the culprits. They said ki kutta hi to hai, koi baat nahi ma'am, aap inke bahar mat khana khilao. Mm -hmm. Police should understand this. And how police is going to understand those people who call hundred or those feeders who are feeding the animals, they should have the copy in their hand whenever they you know whenever they find any conflicted uh, situation they should educate police right they should educate the police people that no no sir this is the law and our uh, uh, supreme court law state that uh, we can feed the animals in so and so uh, conditions and as a fundam as a, as a uh, democratic country we have our fundamental rights to you know to feed the animals or to take care of the sick and injured animals those who are on the street right and, so, uh -huh. so and after police i would i would like to educate the other two ways i was getting to that the no, message we'll that because... way, other people they need they <laughs> need to understand rw because see rw is formed in in a uh, in a society let's say for example in a society society has been made wherein there was a jungle once Right, mm -hmm. and they have they have demolished it and uh, uh, built a concrete jungle over it with five hundred yeah. pillars and uh, uh, flags over there. Did they got a consent from a, any animal who is living on that land before? All the monkeys, all the dogs over there that we are acquiring your uh, uh, space now. Who is going to take care of you? No, they don't. They don't feel it, right? right. And when these the, uh, after after you know um, RW has been formed, they chuck out all the animals, all the um, dogs from the society stating they are creating menace. I mean, excuse me, they are not creating menace. They said that kuda bahar nikalte, ye kuda fila dete. Are kuda to aap hi dal rahe hai, ye ghar se khana bana ke thodi na kuda fila rahe hai. Aap kuda ko kuda rakhe nahi falayenge. Let's touch upon a little bit on, uh, you know, the dichotomy of uh, street animals. I would, I don't like the word street animal. I like to call them community dogs, community animals, be it a cat or a dog or even a cow. What are Posh Foundation's view about ABC? Have you all taken any approach or are you all still in a nascent stage and you all cannot go forward? Where are you all on that stage of ABC? We are doing ABCs, but we are not doing it randomly. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, we are, uh, uh, you know, talking to RWAs and getting them signed over panel. 
we are uh, you know we cannot do it without mapping we cannot no. random pick two dogs from here and two dogs from here it will be of no good it's so currently we have a project done, plan uh, yes currently we have done sector 126 met lice wherein all the dogs have been sterilized so far mm -hmm. and then uh, we uh, now we are doing it in shipra sun city before the covid has happened so right. uh, in shipra uh, sun city that's in indrapuram we have done approximately 35 dogs so far Well, that's a number. Yes. So, tell us an impact as to how does it help uh, well for the larger audience the the neuter and spay program. What is the value of neuter and spay program apart from the dogs not giving puppies and what is the value of it? If you can elaborate and also touching upon not just the community animals, uh, should people also let's say neuter or spay their dogs? who are with them so what are your views on abc abc is uh, not just a process it's the need of the r mm -hmm. abc control the population it mm -hmm. don't worry the dogs are not going to vanish from the planet understand it's it's a controlled way it's a controlled way wherein n number of animals would be there you understand the concept there is a very little resources right and if Ten dogs can be fed, can be kept quietly, can be kept nicely with the permission of RWAs, and there are hundreds of dogs. They will create a little menace. So understand right. the concept. ABC, if you are doing it, so in your area, there will be less dogs. A dog's lifespan, uh, a community dog, dog lifespan, if he is not hit by a vehicle or mm -hmm. intentionally, goes mm -hmm. up to ten years or eleven years maximum. I am telling you. Right. If you are going to spay an animal, let's say ten, you have you have like fifty dogs under the age of like three months, like it ten years. Now. So, if you are going to do ABC, so if you are not an animal lover and you have issues with animals, you have issues with dogs. So, five years, under under, your this lifespan, your 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 lifespan, आप उनको एबीसी कराइए वैक्सीनेट कराइए उनको कॉलर कीजिए और वो अपने एरिया में अडॉप्ट करवाइए उनको एंड धीरे 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 उनका पॉपुलेशन अपने आप कंट्रोल में आ जाएगा सो आई डेफिनेटली हैव मोर क्वेश्चंस अराउंड दिस एरिया बिकॉज़ सिंस आई हैड वर्क्ड इन द इंडियन एनिमल फ्रेटर्निटी ऑफ गेटिंग डॉग्स पेड आई पर्सनली हैड फेस्ड अ लॉट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन फ्रॉम अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल दीस आर टॉक आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द स्ट्रीट एनिमल्स सेइंग दैट आई हैव इंपिंचड अपॉन or i have taken away the right of of animals giving birth and unfortunately on and off sometimes street animals succumb and they they die not because of abc but they die because they have parasites they are sick they are weak they have pyometra uh, which i'm sure you're aware of Uh, there is no way you can save a dog who is suffering from as either a prostate cancer or pyometra and hence for, or even on those lines it's healthy in my view probably to get animals neutered but people are of two kinds they will they do not want to get the street animals neutered but they want the dogs to be moved how do you as an animal foundation tackle this perennial problem which i don't think is ever going to have a fixed answer but nonetheless some sort of sanity that you all have created around this and educating people for that there are two type of people who is going to create these two problems right mm -hmm. who are going to uh, question these two one is the animal lover for animal lover i would like to say abc is best but in in an in an approved way as per the guidelines of awbi what we so do there are is, guidelines around this as yes, well absolutely absolutely we pick the dog we we pick the dog on day 1 we get mm -hmm. the blood test done we wait for day 2 when the blood test arises right if the if we the do, uh, the doctor we uh, we share the sheet with the doctor if the doctor says he is okay for the operation we do the operation and on the table when he cut open the dog then he sees there is a pyometra he removed it immediately if the ovary over any kind of uh, ovarian cancer mm -hmm. is there or lump is there so we do right. it if the if the dog is not fit for uh, uh, the operation maybe is having tick fever maybe some other disease so we treat them first at the shelter we get them healthy we get another blood test and then we do it so the idea is to do abc but saving life also 
Right. Um, Aditi, there's a question on the forum by Neha Ji, and she's asking, who do you contact for street dogs to be neutered? It totally depends upon the area. You connect with your area. Uh, you know, you Google it down, ABC Center or Animal Birth Control Center near me, and it will flash. Right. Because she's also asking, what is the right season for it? As whenever I call, people say it's not the right season. It could be if the dog is on heat or has just given. But elaborate on that point, please. Yes. If monsoon is not at all a season to get them neutered because of too much of moisture, the stitches may get, uh, you know, pass an infection. So right. the best is uh, 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 early winters to the complete winter still. I mean, I would say just from starting from September till March is a very good season. Very good season. Can you also touch upon why uh, do, uh, female dogs who have puppies, who have given birth to puppies can't be operated immediately? Can you also touch upon that? Oh, yes, because their mammary glands, due to their mammary glands are swollen already, they cannot uh, you know, get neutered. And the size of the uterus and ovaries are also big at that time. So mm -hmm. in, instead of a 4 mm cut, we cannot just uh, give a 2 uh, meter cut on the stomach, right? It's, it's not right. It's not. Right. And another thing is if she is lactating and after operation, we have to put her on antibiotics and then anesthesia is there, which is very harmful for the, uh, the younger kids. Right. So all what about male dogs? After three and a half months, get the dog neutered. After three and a half, uh, when, the, when the puppies are of three and a half months. Right. What about male dogs? If you can also uh, talk about their uh, neuter spay program for the audience. Yes, yeah, sure. The right age for getting a, a dog neuter is seven months as per AWDI guidelines. Mm -hmm. And uh, the weight should be more than five kg. And I'm talking about male dogs. Male dogs. OK, so that's that. Because seven months se pehle unka, uh, testosterone, nahi hote hai. they don't I have te testicles. Uh, you know, grown and descended. So, jab tak descend nahi hongi, tab tak we cannot do. Right. So, Aditi, I'm going to do something. I'm going to have fun conversation with you now. We are going to do a rapid fire round. Oh. I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> and you're going to, without thinking, give without the first thinking. answer from your heart. Okay? Are we ready? Yes. My first question is, your favorite rescue story? It can be from you or it can be from your team members. My favorite rescue story is of Cuckoo. So, okay. so Cuckoo is a dog. We got a call like uh, 6 in the evening and then next day we could go. So it's in, it was in Ghaziabad. So the dog was uh, hiding under a car and uh, you know we were trying to get it from here. Because it was reported that it was a lot of maggots. Uh -huh. So, we had to get out of there was this auntie who was standing beside me. I told the auntie, give us a wiper, we will get out of here and get out of here. Then we will get out of here and get out of here. So, she took the wiper and said, get out of here and get out of here. I said, auntie, I don't understand why you are running so much at night. I said, I don't understand why you are running so much at night. And I was like, auntie, I don't like you at this time. I will take a little warm water and I will take a little warm water. Let's see what happens. So, this mom was very upset. After that, we took the dog and we kept it on the veterinary table. The doctor was cleaning it. But his ear fell off. Oh my God. And the doctor says he is very critical. He may not survive. So, it was like a winter time. So, we were drinking the bottle of bislari bottles, which are the dry plastic bottles. We were drinking warm water in it and keeping it together. Because that time the organization was very new. We didn't know what was going to happen. We don't have hot water bottles that time also. So, we did it. Then he survived and he is with us. And the best part is, you know, uh, we run a virtual adoption program wherein you you can virtually adopt a dog and uh, take care of his monthly expense. Mm -hmm. So there is this sweet lady from Chennai who has never met Kuku. Her name is Sindhu Suraj. She adopted Kuku and now Kuku is called Kuku Suraj. Oh my goodness. And That's she such an take care of all her upkeeps, uh, all his upkeeps and everything. And we... Send her a beautiful note on her birthday and all. Hello, Mama. How are you? We miss you and all. It's a beautiful bond we have created. 
So I have a few questions that have popped up and I think they're important to ask. I will just mm -hmm. uh, read it across to you before before I lose them. It's uh, from, there is one from Rana Atiyah, but I've just popped up the one from Tarun. Let me ask from the one from Rana Atiyah. He has asked uh, a question saying that, should you be neutering the male dogs first or the female dogs first in the community? And once you've answered that, we move on to the next question. Considering there are uh, very limited resources, I would prefer to neuter the females first. Sorry, um, you've got to be a little louder. Yes. Can you hear me? Much okay. better. Considering, considering there are very less resources over here, so we need to utilize or at their optimal value. So we would recommend to get the female uh, neutered first. Mm -hmm. Because female get neutered, there'll be no litter. One right. female every six months give puppies eight puppies or ten puppies so one female in a year give at least 12 puppies so multiply it and you will get the answer how yes. wow and there's a question from tarun can you please tell if most people uh, that there are people in his apartment who don't like puppies and uh, they beat the puppies but uh, the puppies are with the parents that's the dog and uh, the, the mother and the father so this gentleman wants to help the puppies or probably the whole gang of dogs so how would you, what would you suggest for the person so that can he can take it forward yes tarun i would suggest you because you must have a, a a smart camera or a smartphone just capture a little video uh, as a footage proof and dial 100 or dial any of the organization working in and around your area and send WhatsApp the footage to them. That will serve as a proof against the person who is hitting the animal. And then on that we have, we can engage police and then we can come and, uh, you know, tackle the situation over there. And trust me, the person will not going to, you know, beat any animal in his entire life. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Aditi, for answering that. Um, next. My next question for you is, what is that aha moment that you get when you sort of spend animals with, uh, spend time with your non-humans or rather the animals? What is that moment when you say, ah? Okay, the aha moment is when the main gate of the shelter opens and you enter the shelter and there are so many dogs just coming towards you, running like anything. I mean, those who are paralyzed also, they are just dragging themselves and saying, Mama, again, Mama, again, Mama, again. That, that moment, I tell you, I forgot everything. Everything, mm -hmm. even my mobile number, even where I'm sitting, even any, everything, I just forget everything. That's beautiful, beautiful. And uh, it's stress busting. Whenever I feel negative, whenever I feel depressed, whenever I feel emotionally distressed, I just hop to shelter. And I meet and hug my kids, and I play with them, and I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's like a rebirth again. So, how do you pass on this message to people who are, let's say, they, you may know of people, and you may know that they may be in need of an animal in their life that will be a turning point, and people go through stress in, in their lives. How do you pass on the message that they should just come and spend time with your animals at your shelter? How do you sort of, it, how do you cultivate this? Because it cannot happen overnight. Absolutely, absolutely. Nay, but it can, trust me. It can? Okay. Yes, it can. If you are suffering from any of the following, love deprived, lonely, uh, not happy, alone, anything, just drop into my shelter or to any shelter. That's it. Spend some time with puppies or with the with the dogs. See their suffering. See, mm -hmm. they don't have legs, but still they are wagging their tails. I mean, they are in so much pain, and you are putting, uh, you know, you are putting medicine over their wound, and they are licking you. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that moment, you realize that, you know, nothing can bother you. Nothing is bigger than the pain of the body. Mm -hmm. So you, this too shall pass. So there will be no hurdle to it, and. You know, I always, you know, loop people to volunteer at the shelter because eventually uh, it converted into a successful adoption every time. So <laughs> I, I humbly request people to come visit the shelter, be a part of the solution, spend more time with them. And trust me, it's not at all a sad shelter. It's a very happy shelter. 
So um, there is a question by Sharad Sharma on the forum saying, could you give a few examples of RWA setting aside some area for the care of the trees? Uh, if that can be, if you've understood the question, if you can answer. Yes, yes, yes. I can give examples. That is uh, Shipra Krishna Vista. Two years back, we set up feeding points for animals over there. And then in Shipra City, uh, Sun City, Indrapuram, we have designed and designated food points. And these RWA has also designated two uh, security guards for the animals who, you know, who clean their bowls and fill it uh, with the, uh, water, clean water every day. Mm -hmm. So there are so many examples. You can also talk to the RWA. See, coexistence is the key. Tell them that it is illegal to remove the animals from a society. The only way is to neuter them, to get them vaccinated, so that the number of uh, uh, animals will be fixed over there and eventually start feeding them. Hmm. So they'll become friends. Right. I, mean, I can roam around in my society at one in the night also, because there are 10 dogs behind me, following me and dropping me to the home. You tell hmm. me who is going to, uh, you know, who is going to uh, trouble say, you. Know, who is going to trouble me? Nobody. Yeah. So the next question from my rapid rapid fire round is: If animals could speak, what is the message they would give out to human species? Okay. If they could speak, they will say that we are not yours to eat, to abuse. Right to, you know, to experiment on. Mm. They are not. They are not non-living. Understand the concept. Understand the situation over here. And uh, another thing is, they would also want the same fundamental rights as of human. Just they, they just want to live in harmony. If you don't love them, just don't hate them. Don't throw right. stones at them. Okay, that's a powerful one. Thank you, uh, Diti. I as a as Posh Foundation has grown. Is it that you all focus on all animals, or you all have very specific animals? I mean, species of animals that you focus on. And in case you are taking in all animals, how do you look after them? So let's just look uh, hear you out on those. Yes. So when we've decided to open a shelter our concept was very clear we were going to focus only on dogs because every animal has a specific area like uh canines they have specific doctors bovines okay. so we can right. dedicate one thing so we are uh, you know we are catering dogs mostly mm -hmm. but yes we do got call from uh, from people let's say ki just a uh, there's a bull jo uh, just ko chot lag gayi hai mm -hmm. there's a cow jo just accident ho gaya so there comes uh, other organization which plays a part wherein we connect uh, like for example we call the han foundation and then there's a very nice lady nish ja she picked up the call and uh, you know she uh, extend the necessary help for the big animals right. and then if if if, uh, if a person calls and say ki there is a cat uh, stuck in the shaft at sixth floor so they can definitely call the fire brigade right and, uh, and they can help you out in these situations so, and abhay danan is there who take care of the birds Mm -hmm. So this is this is how we divert calls if it is not for the animal which we can help. And uh, recently we have rescued a peacock. So we called the uh, the uh, wildlife police. They came within no time, and then they took the animal to the care. And it, it was overwhelming to see the response of them. It was so quick, and the peacock was safe because he was he was mauled by a group of dogs. Right, right. So that brings me to the next question, which on, on the same topic that you just quickly touched upon, you said that there are different vets for different animals. And a lot of us think that a vet is a vet. And for all animals, a vet will be one stop solution. So elaborate on that, please, because that's an important topic that you touched on. See, we started Bosch Foundation in 2014. In past five, six years, what we have learned is the Every doctor is wonderful, no doubt. But speciality is there. I oh, mean, I a, a doctor who is doing ABC from past two years is so pioneered that he can uh, he can operate 20 dogs in a day mm -hmm. with minimum futures. 
right mm -hmm. and then there are uh, veterinary doctors who can take care of minor injuries like fracture fractures and uh, uh, you know tick fever and hematoma so uh, you can count on the uh, the new doctors also those who have who are freshmen mm -hmm. and uh, surgeons are there who, who can treat more uh, critical surgeries like um, for instance a big pyometra is there right. or some heart disease is there or so on and on right. so, so on the same line that we are talking about the vets and their contribution and posh foundations as experience etc touch upon a little on how can people who see accident cases or who are seeing dogs with skin problems how do they help these dogs what is that rescue 101 you will suggest tips on rescuing or rehabilitating we have we have a helpline number that is work uh, on whatsapp as well Mm -hmm. You need to do two things. You need to click the photograph of the dog as well as send the uh, send the photograph of the dog as well as send the location. Mm -hmm. right? And we will uh, we'll send the photograph of the dog or the video of the dog to our surgeon if the vet is not available at your place. Right? Mm -hmm. So for our first and prime objective was that you pass me whatever veterinary you have to them so that you can take them quickly and take them there if it's an emergency right. case. Right. If there is main skin infection or other disease or you know swelling in paws and all or knuckling is there, so this is this is how we do. See, this COVID has uh, you know uh, uh, brought the uh, uh, our life upside down. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. So now what we have done is we ask people those who uh, don't have access to go outside but see an animal in distress. They can connect to us, and we can connect them to the veterinary doctor on video call. He sees the case, he prescribes them, uh, you know, SOS medicines, and then he and then we figure out the thing to bring the dog to or bring to any animal to the uh, to the necessary care he or she needed. Right. So there's a question that's uh, come up right now from Rana. He said, "We can we contribute to a Posh Foundation? If yes, how?" Yes, you can contribute either your time or your resources. Uh, time, as in we do accept volunteers uh, 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 mostly on weekends. Uh, if you are uh, above eighteen, uh, you have to carry you have to carry your ID card. And if you are thirteen, then uh, uh, parental guidance is must. Right. And then uh, and resources. If you are skilled with the you know blogging. Then you can connect with us. You can uh, cover topics, very you know serious topics like um, uh, the ways to help animals. How can we uh, assist our, uh, little kids of birds we found on road? Mm -hmm. This is an example. And uh, other resources, if you if you work for uh, an MNC that uh, caters CSR, you can connect with us. Be a part of the solution. Those CSR convince them they should get the uh, dog sterilized under their CSR curriculum, and we have mm -hmm. an ETA exemption receipt to give away to them. So it's a win-win situation. The area dogs will get sterilized, and they'll get the CS. We'll get the CSR. Right. So elaborate a little on COVID and how how posh foundation is riding through covid because it has definitely you touched upon it a little but if you can just give an example as to how are your people in the you know your your extended hands and your surgeons etc how are they managing everything back in in the foundation in your farm or shelter as you call it uh, or whatever and what are those need of the art that you say if i had a magic lamp i would rub it and this is what i get for for my animals what is it that you so desire through through covid ah uh, okay so see this covid had uh, made me had convinced me that we are stronger than before mm -hmm. the day the day covid date was announced that it's going to be a lockdown we mm -hmm. got so many calls i remember sheila called me up and says ki bachcho ke liye khana hai ki nahi hai Wow. And I was like, yes, we have. Thoda sa bhi and mm -hmm. then our doctor called up and then other doctors are called up. You see, ma'am, we are not available face to face, but we are available on video call. If someone has a case, please tell us. We will help you as much as we can. Then, we have done this. 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 Yes. 
community animals. Hmm. So we have collaborated with HSA, wherein we have set up three uh, community kitchens, wherein we uh, prepare the meal, rice and chicken and all whatever thing is left, dal, jo bhi mil jata hai. Hmm. And we distribute to the feeders. We have a WhatsApp group wherein we uh, connect people and they say ki main 40 dogs ko I khilati hu. Main pehle 20 ko khilati thi. I can extend to 40 or 50 dogs. So right. we connect them. We have a time slot like 2, uh, 2.30 baje se leke 4 baje tak hum log baithe CISF camp ki road ke bahar. Khana mm-hmm. leke. So people come with their bucket and say ki aaj 40 kutto ko main khilaungi. Aaj main 50 ko khila rahi hu. So, mm-hmm. so they tell us in advance. So we give cook meal to them. Is it dono kaam asan We being one person, we cannot cook the meal and we cannot go and distribute to every dog. Right. right. And same is with the other feeder. So now we have divided our, our work. We are cooking the meal and they are distributing. Mm. And that they send the videos and photographs and we also visit to see that the dogs, the food is being reached to the dog or not. Right. So this is the things and. Uh, I remember first day of uh, community kitchen, we have three people. So I said, Ki, chalo, kal kam khana banayenge. Three hi log hai, to baaki hum dal hmm. The other day we have twelve people. Oh wow! So now 12, 15, 20, 25. So everyone is feeding like forty to fifty dogs. Right. Everyone has extended their help. So right. things are going better, and and fingers crossed. But there are so many people who hate dogs or who were neutral towards dogs. And out of kindness, they say, ki ye kya khayenge, they start feeding. And I oh, want that, them to be back in the circle. Yeah, so it I, I, I think after COVID also, they will you know, continue feeding them. Yeah, so that's, that's why I was just going to the next round as well for you uh, as a question that how are you taking the precautions that as soon as the ban lifts, because at this point in time, poor animals they don't realize what's covid and that's not covid for them they have received space nobody is hitting them nobody they are not getting scared by the sound of the vehicles etc hmm. so moment the ban lifts there's going to be chaos and mayhem pouring in so how, are you all doing anything to educate people that you know yes 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 so our first point. and foremost our first and foremost point to give food to any feeder is you are not going to feed the animals on the main road on the mm-hmm. area where there is a lot of hustle and bustle on the market area you have to be 25 meter away from the main room mm-hmm. so that dogs will not get used to it they will not wait after 40 days of lockdown ki aaj bhi yahi par khana milega mm-hmm. and somebody would uh, you know a speeding car would hit and run that. right so that is that is the best we can do Right. There is a question from Neha Jain who says, do you know of any shelter in Meerut or a contact person for getting a dog neutered in Meerut? In Meerut. Yes, we do have. If you, I can I can share uh, uh, the phone number with you. So right. Neha Jain, if you could just uh, reach out to uh, Posh Foundation. Posh Foundation, yes. You can drop can a text or something. Yes. Sorry. Uh, would you all, would she reach out to you all on the Facebook page or how yes, would they on, on Facebook page? Right. Naya, yeah, I hope your question is answered. So we're coming to almost the last few minutes and it's been a lovely conversation that we've had with you. So what is the message that you have for the for the listeners? I mean, what is that one thing that you really want each one who is attending right now to take away with them? And what can some of them do to help Posh Foundation spread the message that you all have? I would request all the people, spare, nobody is that busy, spare some time and visit the nearest shelter to you. Mm-hmm. See, meet the animals, your life's perspective will change. Kindness mm-hmm. is what made us human. So, you know, uh, lit that fire inside you, be kind to anyone in need especially the animals because they are mute they cannot tell you and uh, last uh, and uh, most important is be vegetarian or i'll tell you oh that's for a lot of people to take home because sometimes i mean quickly touch upon because we have about five minutes why is it important to be vegetarian because sometimes people don't understand I feed dogs, but why should I need to be a vegetarian? So, you know, if you can just explain that to people, uh, I think the message will go home better. 
see being vegetarian is actually a personal choice but not to the animal you are eating that is coming to your plate understand that and if you are a true and if you truly crave for non veg please you know chase a duck chase a chicken bring him home slash it down in front of your little children and clean them up and eat if you think this is irrational then eating non veg is ir irrational there is a very there is a very valid reason why we don't uh, you know why we don't take our children uh, to slaughter houses but we take them to pick up the apples that's a poignant point that you're leaving our uh, our listeners with uh, aditi and uh, thank you so much for having created this wonderful conversation that we've had and taken the messages across various topics to people if people need to reach out to posh foundation where can they reach uh, posh foundation whether it is to volunteer whether it's to donate or whatever how is it possible for people to uh, contribute to posh foundation in any form we are on facebook we are on instagram we have a helpline number you can reach out in any uh, if an animal needs your help or our help if you want to volunteer if you want to support the cause anything or any questions or any query you can visit our website as well anything that you need just type posh foundation in google and you will direct it to you right thank you so much so i thank all the people who have logged in as well on live facebook and otherwise um, on other forums and aditi i hope that we will be able to meet at some point in time some day so thank you so much for what you do thank you thank you so much all right bye then bye bye, -bye.